Sadia for uh, introducing us and uh, uh, you know introductions then motivate you <laughs> because you get to know uh, how others uh, perceive you and project you. So that was a good uh, tonic before we go to start our proceedings. Thank you. Reputation management uh, and alumni network advisory boards ranking and accreditation. So, uh, so it's about identity, it's about perception, it's about uh, perceptual uh, mapping and uh, conception of the uh, of the role of the institution and uh, then it's uh, projection to various Im important critical segments such as faculty and the alumni network and those who are directly engaged as uh, in various forms in advisory capacity with the university and whatever ranking and accreditation means so for now let's leave ranking and accreditation because then we would be too it would be too mechanical and uh, uh, there is nothing to talk about because these are given and we don't have much of uh, uh, leeway much of capacity or uh, opportunity to intervene right now so let's uh, focus on vision mission unique value reputation and, uh, and how we can create uh, and uh, shape our identity and how we can infuse a spirit within our roles. Uh, faculty uh, routine is uh, repetitive. It's uh, cyclical, it's circular, it's very linear, and it's, uh, it can become very boring. Uh, you could just teach maybe in science or in many other areas. So you do one thing, you have one office and it's a lifetime engagement. So there's not much of change going around, you know, coming to you. Uh, unlike the role of other leaders, like a leader of a political party or a leader of uh, any other popular, any movement or social movement. So here we are trying to bring in leadership to a to the role of faculty and uh, they are never seen as very proactive, dynamic, enterprising, uh, fast forward or things like that. Uh, so normal perception is that I mean, uh, they are stale and they are uh, uh, tuned to their own areas and they are bookish, uh, things like that. So this is very important uh, and uh, very important idea that we would like to touch upon today. Second is uh, <coughs> managing revenues, cost, and raising funds. So certainly everything boils down to resources. And uh, if we want to have good faculty, we need resources to have good faculty. If we want to retain good faculty, then we need to have uh, increments and promotions built into their roles and incentives uh, and rewards also built into their uh, uh, you know roles and give them a trajectory for their onwards progress so all all of that is manageable only if we can have revenues sufficient resources and we do things it means which have utility things which have uh, uh, relevance, things which are in demand, things for which someone is ready to pay, things which, which are needed, and things which are critical, for which there is uh, a portion or a fraction of a scarce resources can be made available by a third party. So that's also certainly, if we want to build reputation, if you want to have a spirit, if you want to have identity, it's not because we want to write some poems and we want to have others appreciate the prose and the poem and, they are not, and our otherwise uh, good thoughts and ideas. We want to do some meaningful business. We are here about business, right? We, by business, I mean there is a function, there is an institution, and the institution has to sustain. And there is existential and sustain, existential challenge that we face as an individual, as well as an institution, as a department, as a program, as a faculty, as a custodian of the institution. 
So I think for that, of course, we need to see and evaluate how can we be part of that meaningful transfer of resources from society to the institution. And we build reputation and identity in a way that would uh, convert that uh, project projection into engagement and interaction and the survival and growth of the institution. So I think it was very brilliantly thought, thought of to bring that. It is a little bit crude, but uh, I'm glad that it has been pointed out uh, here at the end. So I think on the, 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 there are two sides of the, of the role and identity. And I am very happy, delighted to see that we have some really outstanding panelists here with us. We have Dr. Gulzar who is again a leading architect. He has a design, he's architect, but he also has a very distinguished design mindset. So I think he can design something for us right here that would have inner value as well as external value, right? Because here we are talking of both inner value as well as external value. So we need a design of the work and a system in a way that will address both challenges. And then we have General Javed, who has headed the leading institutions uh, of uh, public sector and has worked uh, as uh, on the field as commander of the infantry. So he's been a soldier and been, a, been a, an academic head and leader. So we look forward to his wisdom as well. Uh, Dr. Raslam, would you be also kind enough to share some of your uh, thoughts uh, while you're here, uh, as a, especially a, what you, how you did it in PIAS and then how you program and dream of doing it at UMT, <laughs> all right? <laughs> That's chairman telling you, right? <laughs> so anyway, let's begin with Dr. Jawad. Uh, and we look forward to his thoughts. Uh, we have, as I see, uh, time up to 2.15. So we leave about uh, 10 minutes to questions and answers and give me five, seven, eight minutes to wrap up. So let's say we have time up to two, which means that we have one hour. So maybe 15 minutes each would be good enough, right? We have got four speakers. So 15 minutes each would be good enough. 